since the late 15th century, Puerto Rico has been under Spanish rule until the Spanish-American War of 1898. As a result of the United States invasion of Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans became citizens under the Jerome Sheffroth Act of 1917. As a result, they were given privilege to represent the United States of America in the Olympic Games between 1917 until 1947. After falling under United States control, Puerto Rico debated its political role and what it should be, struggling throughout the years to form a separate identity from the United States. In the world of sports, however, Puerto Ricans have been able to enjoy their sovereignty since 1948, being able to hold their rep flag representing the island. It is through sports that Puerto Ricans can show their pride and national identity, an expression that allows for citizens to, to create homogeneity in terms of traditions, culture, and language. Sports sovereignty has been an issue historically for Puerto Rico from 1493 until 1898. Puerto Rico was a Spanish colony. After the Spanish-American War, the United States took political control over Puerto Rico due to the implementation of the Treaty of Paris. Due to the fact that Puerto Rico went from being a Spanish colony to United States territory, the island has not been recognized globally as a free country. However, due to the recognition as a commonwealth, they are able to represent themselves in sports internationally. This has provided Puerto Ricans a type of sovereignty where they can express their national identity. Puerto Rico athletes have inspired future generations of athletes to represent their island without having to participate for another nation. The privilege of representing Puerto Rico for many athletes is the result of a long history that transitioned from participating on the United States flag to being able to represent PR as a sovereign state. Since Puerto Rico is under the jurisdiction of the United States, the Olympic Committee did not recognize it as a separate nation. The historical event that led to the creation of the Puerto Rico Olympic team was the independent de delegation of 1930 Central American and Caribbean Games in Havana, Cuba. Then in 1935, in El Salvador, Puerto Rican athletes marched under the host country's flag and used the Salvadorian anthem instead of the United States'. The CAC Association identified Puerto Rico as an independent delegation which caused confusion on which anthem to use. This led to Puerto Rican athletes using the Salvadorian anthem. As time progressed, between 1938 and 1946, Puerto Rico went back to competing under the United States flag and anthem. In the 1952 Olympics, Puerto Rican athletes marched under both the U.S. and Puerto Rican flags. Six days later, after the opening ceremony, Puerto Rico became a commonwealth of the United States. Since then, Puerto Rico has been recognized as a sovereign nation and has been actively representing their nation in international competitions. Although Puerto Rico has sovereignty in sports in general, some Americans do not believe that the island has the right to participate in sports as a sovereign nation since it is a U.S. territory. For example, after Jasmine Camacho Quinn won the gold medal for Puerto Rico in the 110 meter hurdles in the 2021 Olympics, Camacho was interviewed by USA Today. She was questioned upon her pride in representing Puerto Rico, but her words were slightly altered. I am pretty sure everybody in Puerto Rico is excited. For such a small country, it gives little kids hope. I am just glad I am the person to do that. Throughout the article, published by the Washington Post on August 5, 2021, Author Joel Melendez Palillo highlights efforts promoted by USA Today to diminish Puerto Rican pride through the replacement of the word country to territory. Upon the quoting of Jasmine Camacho Quinn's Olympic interview, while athletes show their national pride, some media sources attempt to belittle the athletes' pride by altering their words. This reflects the conflict between how Puerto Ricans see themselves and how others see us, and the struggle between political and national identity. Sports sovereignty for Puerto Rico is not a guaranteed right. The Olympic Committee, for example, does not plan to remove Puerto Ricans' right to participate in sports, but Congress can remove the Puerto Ricans' ability at any time. Although sovereignty is possible through the world of sports, it, it does not trump the political status of the island. This means that Congress always has the power to decide Puerto Ricans' political future at any moment since U.S. territories like Puerto Rico don't have the political representation in Congress. Another very important issue that comes with sports sovereignty is the governmental funding. Economic support has always been an issue in Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, the country is under a very corrupt government system, where funds go missing on a regular basis. As a result of the lack of funds, the athletes take their talents to the United States so they, ha they can have the opportunity to perform at the highest level. The Olympic Committee of Puerto Rico receives economic support by the government for the competitions. However, it is not unusual for the com committee to run out of money. This is due to the prioritizations of coaches, trainers, committee presidents, uh, instead of prioritizing athletes. In addition to not having sufficient funds and good handling of the budgeting, this has led to the Puerto Rican team missing out on Olympic qualifying tournaments because they could not fly out team to competitions. Not having enough funding for devel developing their athletes, many fall short and do not reach their full potential to compete globally. These financial issues caused by the government hinders athletes' progress and opportunities to reach the highest heights as Puerto Rican athletes. 
Throughout the years, Puerto Ricans have shown success in sports, which has become a sport source of national identity. Examples of successes in sports internationally can be seen with Lisa Boscarino with success at the Pan American Games. Lisa Boscarino won gold in 1987 and bronze in 1991 in the half lightweight class judo competition. Jaime Espinal in 2012 became the first Olympic medalist in wrestling for Puerto Rico by winning a silver medal in the 84 kg division. Another success is Javier Curso, who won bronze medal in the 2012 London Olympics in the 400 meter hurdle race. A proud moment in sports can be seen in Olympic basketball in 2004. The most famous win came when Puerto Rico beat U the USA basketball team, which is known to be the best program in history, 92-73 to in the opening game. Puerto Rico became the second team in history to defeat the US Olympics basketball team. Once the Puerto Rican team came back from the Olympics, they got a big parade for their accomplishments. In Olympic history, Puerto Rico has won two gold medals, one in tennis and another in Olymp athletics. Two silver medals, one in boxing and one in wrestling, and six bronze medals, five in boxing and one in athletics. Overall, Puerto Rico has won 10 medals. The first gold medal was won by Monica Puig in single tennis at the Rio de Janeiro 2016 Olympics. The latest gold medal uh, came from Jasmine Camacho Quinn. She broke the Olympic record in the semifinals and the 100 meter hurdles. When she landed in Puerto Rico, the airport was filled with people to celebrate her gold medal. She became an overnight sensation for Puerto Ricans and seen as an idol to many young people. When it comes to pride in sports, since Puerto Rico is a small island and we don't have the funds like other countries, we do not win as often. But when Puerto Rican athletes win, Puerto Ricans fill the streets and come together to celebrate as a nation. Sí, eh, la soberanía deportiva es extremadamente importante porque a través de, con la soberanía deportiva somos un país, nos reconocen como un país eh, y no como una colonia. Eh, este, y es, los puertorriqueños se pueden identificar porque este fenómeno la, se ve en el arte, se ve en la música, pero yo creo que donde más se sienten identificados es a través del deporte. Eh, cada vez que gana Eh, los peloteros, como los puertorriqueños, pues se emocionan. Solamente eh, cuando ganó Mónica Puig nuestra primera medalla de oro, como todo Puerto Rico se volvió este, ¿verdad? extremadamente contento, igual con Jasmine Camacho y todos nuestros boxeadores que fueron los primeros medallistas olímpicos. The ability for Puerto Rican athletes to choose between representing the United States and Puerto Rico has been a complicated and controversial decision for many. This has led many athletes to make difficult decisions between playing for their country or having it easier to qualify. This is not only hard for the athletes itself, but also for the fans as well. Many feel betrayed by their idols because it is possible that the athletes will win a medal for another nation. In the case of mine, eh, I was born in the United States, Eh, y tengo un padre, mi papá era americano, mi mamá es de aquí, pero yo, y yo me crié en Puerto Rico. Tenía la oportunidad de escoger por quién competir eh, y podía competir por Estados Unidos, pero yo escogí representar a Puerto Rico a pesar de todas las dificultades con las que me enfrentaba, porque yo pues, verdaderamente me sentía puertorriqueña, eh, me sentía más identificada con nuestra cultura y pues decidí que representaba Puerto Rico. A pesar de que fue bien difícil, eh, en los Panamericanos del 1987, eso me dio pues, eh, la oportunidad, al ganar la medalla de oro del continente de América, eh, me dio la oportunidad de competir en los Juegos Olímpicos en Seúl, Corea. Ahí era la primera vez que iba a competir el judo femenino como exhibición para prueba, para ver si si iban a aceptar el judo femenino en las olimpiadas, aunque el judo masculino ya llevaba desde el 1964 compitiendo. An example of this is the case of Cheyenne Vasallo, who won gold in the freestyle 200 meter swim in the 1979 Pan Americans. He couldn't compete under the Puerto Rico flag due to the Puerto Rican Olympic Committee ruling against him. They stated that to represent Puerto Rico, they must reside in the island for at least a year. So he resulted to representing the United States. While the U.S. national anthem was playing, the crowd decided to sing him La Borinqueña over the anthem. His win is not considered a win for Puerto Rico, but many Puerto Ricans side with it being a win for Puerto Rico.
Another example of this is Gigi Fernandez's decision to participate for the U.S. after she had already previously competed for the Puerto Rican national team. She was a famous tennis player who chose to participate for the United States in 1992 and 1996. Many saw this as a controversial decision. Gigi Fernandez was hated by many because of her decision and was shamed for wanting to be successful. She believed that it was biased when she saw Jaime Espinat, a Dominican born who won a silver medal for Puerto Rico, carry the. Gigi Fernandez stated that on Twitter, so that's okay. It's okay for the Dominican to carry our flag, but it's not okay for me, a Puerto Rican, to win a gold medal for the United States as a Puerto Rican. This sparked many hatred towards her, and she received many hate messages containing the word traitor. One controversial case was the case of Charles Flaherty. On February 18, 2018, Charles Flaherty became the first athlete to compete in the Winter Olympics since 1998 for qualification in Alpine. Charles was 10 when his family moved to the island. Athletes representing Puerto Rico must be born in the Commonwealth, have at least one Puerto Rican parent, be married to a Puerto Rican, or have lived on the island for at least three years. At the COPUR assembly, the committee voted again, giving him a six-month temporary affiliation which allowed Charles to participate under the Puerto Rican flag. The complexity of Puerto Rican sports can be seen in the case of his son, William Flaherty. Some people felt he didn't have the right to represent Puerto Rico because he does not have any Puerto Rican ancestry. Regardless, William wore the flag and represented the P Puerto Ricans in the 2002 Beijing Winter Olympics in the giant solo ski event. The latest example is the one of gold medalist Jasmine Camacho Quinn. Her Olympic gold medal is a powerful reminder that Puerto Rico is a U.S. colony in the 21st century with a complex political situation since she decided to participate for Puerto Rico instead of the United States. Ja Camacho Quinn was born in South Carolina but birthed by Puerto Rican parents. Being able to represent one of the countries may seem as a benefit, but it is not a sensitive topic since it can bring many complications between fans and the athletes. This decision can lead to an athlete's reputation being improved or damaged. Puerto Rico's sports sovereignty has been a debatable issue from a political standpoint, given the Puerto Rico status as a U.S. territory. Sports have been an important issue of Puerto Rico when it comes to showcasing their individuality, pride, and national identity. It is through sports that its people through its athletes have shown their spirit of independence and resilience. The ability to compete in their own team has led to many successful athletes and has inspired younger generations to strive for greatness. Through all this success, the athletic department has reached the competitive levels of bigger nations. The global athletic accomplishments have joined Puerto Rico together and made them proud of their culture. Puerto Rico's sports sovereignty showcases the perseverance that a group of people can have in search for their culture, pride, and national identity. While being a small island, Puerto Ricans' athletes are up on the podium raising the flag high and showcasing their pride to the world.